One of the most iconic and legendary figures in Scottish history is William Wallace. He's remembered today as Braveheart, with a blockbuster film made about his life. But it's accepted that this isn't the most historically accurate piece of work. The truth about Wallace was that he was a thorn in the side of the King Edward I of England, and he did score a number of victories against the English. In Scotland he was seen as a heroic figure, and he became known as the Guardian of Scotland. But he became a captured prisoner of the English. He was subjected to horrific death and was humiliatingly paraded through the English capital. But what is the story of the horrific execution of William Wallace? William Wallace was born around 1270, and there isn't much known about his early life. His father was allegedly a Scottish landowner, however during his early life King Alexander III ruled over Scotland and the land was peaceful and safe. But then after his death things changed massively. The throne passed to Alexander's granddaughter, Margaret, the Maid of Norway, but she was just a child living in Norway, thousands of miles from Scotland. There was no definitive successor to the throne and Robert the Bruce tried to take the throne himself. However, the stability in Scotland was not solid anymore and Edward I was invited from England to help decide who would be the rightful king. At Berwick-upon-Tweed Castle, Edward I chose John Balliol, who he believed had the best claim, but John was a puppet king, and he was ultimately under the control of the English King Edward, and he saw Scotland as a land that he could take and conquer, and make as a vassal state. He forced the Scottish to pay him homage, and they were fuming that their king was just serving the needs of the English. The Scottish Council then formed an alliance with the French, and Edward I saw this as a declaration of war, and he then brutally raided Berwick upon Tweed and massacred the people there. Edward I was known as the Hammer of the Scots, and no one could beat him in a battle at the time. However, during the invasion, William Wallace was a soldier inside of the Scottish army, and he may have had some form of experience in fighting the English at this time. Some historians have suggested that he may have been inside of Edward's army, and may have fought as an English archer, Wallace was a tall man and was considered a giant who had very strong arms and legs, but Edward I's attack caused chaos and there was great anger against him, and for this a rebellion broke out. William Wallace joined the uprising, and he was then involved in the murder of the English Sheriff of Lanark in the May of 1297. Following this, he began to attack the English in different settlements that they had established along Scottish rivers, and more rebellions broke out across the land. The nobles continued to submit to Edward I, but William Wallace remained a defender of Scotland and continued to fight. He established a base where he would begin raids on English settlements from inside of Ettrick Fort, and he joined up with Andrew Murray. On the 11th of September 1297, the English army was confronted by William Wallace and his forces near to Stirling by the Forth River. Wallace was outnumbered, but the Scots defeated the English and he commanded the soldiers very well. Wallace told his men to be brave and to dig in, and they would manage to cross the river and then slaughter the English. This victory in particular enhanced Wallace's reputation and because of this, he was appointed along with Andrew Murray, a guardian of the Kingdom of Scotland. He then continued to push the English back, and he raided into the north of England, going through Northumberland. The Scottish earls used him as a weapon, and he was knighted. However, the English king then ordered another invasion of Scotland to take place in the April of 1298. There were huge numbers recruited across England to fight the Scottish, and he even paid 25,000 people to fight against the Scots. Edward raided Scottish settlements and won back a number of castles, but he was after William Wallace, but he could not find him. The Scots were watching what was happening from afar, but the English army was suffering with low morale and food shortages. A rumour was then heard that Wallace was close to Falkirk and Edward I, along with the English army, went there to try and defeat them once and for all. 
On the 22nd of July 1298, the Battle of Falkirk kicked off, and this was where Wallace was defeated. The Scottish rebel was now at the mercy of the English. Edward's soldiers fought brilliantly, and Edward used Welsh longbowmen to cause chaos as they fired towards the Scottish and cut down many. The cavalry kept going in and attacking, and because of this, the Scottish formations were broken up and devastated. The Scottish were heavily defeated, but Wallace, knowing he was a wanted man, managed to run off and escape capture to begin with. There's some belief that he went to France to try and convince the French king to attack the English, but this ultimately failed. In 1304, he had returned to Scotland after a few years away, and he was now heavily wanted by the English. He was considered a guerrilla fighter, and the Scottish nobles would continue to allow the English to do most as they pleased. He remained under cover and quiet until the 5th of August 1305, and then he was captured and handed over to the English. One Scottish knight, who was considered a turncoat, was actually loyal to the English and he betrayed Wallace and turned him over. He was captured by the Sheriff of Dumbarton and he then began to follow Wallace. In the evening he was taken whilst it was dark and he was then given to the English and was transported to London. On the 23rd of August 1305 the humiliation began. He was paraded throughout London with thousands of Londoners jeering at him. This was Edward I's land, and it was where William Wallace would be brought to trial. He was taken to Westminster Hall through the baying crowd, who threw things and shouted at him, for all they had known was that he was a Scottish rebel, and he was the enemy. At trial he was not allowed a defence, and he was crowned with a crown of oak, mocking him as if he was the King of Scots. He was accused of treason, and this attracted some debate. He knew he was not a subject of the English, and he claimed he could not be considered a traitor because he was Scottish and not Edward I's subject. However, he was still sentenced to death because of this. William Wallace's execution occurred immediately. He was taken from the court hearing to the Tower of London, which was at the time a royal residence. There he was stripped naked, and he was then tied to the heels of a horse, he was dragged through the streets of London yet again, which was very painful. His head would have been smashing against the cobbled London streets. He was taken for four miles, and he would then have been badly injured at the end of this ordeal. He was then taken to Smithfield, and this was an infamous place of execution. Smithfield would be during the Tudor period where Mary I would burn a number of people at the stake but William Wallace, just outside of the Tower of London, was to be hanged, drawn and quartered, which was a terrifying and brutal death sentence. When he got there, he was unhooked from the horse, and he was already a broken man. He was led up to the scaffold in front of a huge crowd. He was then handed over to the executioner, who first placed a noose around his neck and put the rope over the gallows, and the executioner then pulled down, William Wallace was suspended off the floor and he was strangling, but just before he died from this, he was then released and he fell to the floor. Following this, he was then put onto a table. He was disemboweled and castrated, and his entrails, heart, liver and lungs were pulled out and were burned in front of him. He may have been alive as this part before his heart and major organs were removed. Following this, he was then quartered, and was hacked into four different parts before his head was cut off by the executioner. William Wallace's remains were then sent to four different parts of Edward I's kingdom, and his head was then placed on a pole on London Bridge. William Wallace is known today for being a heroic Scottish figure who led the fight against the English and the might of the hammer of the Scots, Edward I. He may have been the character in Braveheart, but he was a fearsome military commander and leader. He got the upper hand on the English king many times, but ultimately he was turned over to the English and he was then executed in a horrific manner, and for this the Scottish rebel came to a horrific end. Thank you for watching and to support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.